Hello you guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Carol's Daily Sauce. What we're doing on this lovely, lovely Sunday is we are doing a cook with me. Um, we have been wanting meatloaf forever. And so what I have already done, <clears throat> excuse me y'all, not showing my face because I look dog tired because the dogs was up barking last night. Um, there was something going on outside and they had to be involved in it. And so I, yeah, I don't look right. But anyway, this is three pounds of ground turkey. Um, it has red onions in it. My husband prefers red onions, chopped up, and uh, two sticks of celery, as well as garlic, and it was ground turkey. And I seasoned it. Now your seasonings can be anything that you want. As we always know, if you've ever seen any of my Cook With Me's, I use seasoning salt, any brand of your choice. I use garlic powder, onion powder, and uh, pepper, black pepper. But you're gonna take two sticks of celery. And this really depends on how much each one of these vegetables you actually like. I use a half of a medium size purple onion. I used uh, two sticks of celery and I used a large bell pepper. I don't know why, I do like the taste of the bell pepper um, in the meatloaf. I like it better than anything else, but the onions and the bell pepper, all of it goes together pretty good. But anyway, don't look at the pot, just look at how I took. And what I did is I took and I used three pieces of bread as a binding agent and I used one egg. So three pieces of bread, one egg, and I seasoned it and put my vegetables in it and then I rolled and just mixed it all together like this. Now what I'm going to be doing now is, I actually can cook it in here but I don't like to cook it in here because this right here can get hot but I do have, um, I do have, um, what is that? What am I saying, y'all? I do have hot pots where I can, um, you know, well over an hour in a 350, 400 oven. It depends on the type of oven you have. Uh, electric ovens cook a little faster, so you have to uh, do according to your stove instructions. I don't know, but normally, see that nice little round egg shape type? I'm gonna cook it for about a gravy. So I'm gonna make a gravy from scratch and put that on top of it after it's done. I'm also making cabbage, um, fried fried cabbage in a, in a cast iron skillet, as well as cornbread and mashed potatoes. So we're gonna go ahead and go put this in the oven. Uh, there will be, okay you guys, I'm coming back because I changed the pan that I actually had it in and I reshaped it, but this is what we're gonna cook it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the oven and about, about 350, I'd say about 350, um, no more than that because you don't want it to cook too much on the outside and not be cooked on the inside. We want it all to have the, um, you know, all the heat and everything to cook all together. Now, if it is your first time cooking a meatloaf, you gotta make sure that the meat is cooked all the way through. I know what meatloaf looks like when it's cooked. I've been cooking a long time, but I would suggest cooking it for at least an hour for this three. Okay, as you can see, I have a head of lettuce, um, saying no lettuce, a head of cabbage. I have already cut it in half. You guys, we don't have big, big knives in this house. Um, so this is what I'm using, a serrated knife. But anyway, you cut it in half, and once you cut it in half, you're actually gonna cut it in um, uh, quarters because it's the easiest way to do it. So there's two, okay? Now, this part right here, this part right here, see that? Right here, I'll show you, I'm gonna cut it off and you'll be able to see it a little more. See this part right here that just fell off? This is what me and my siblings used to fight over uh, when my mother was cooking cabbage. This has a very spicy taste. It tastes amazing with salt and pepper. I don't eat it anymore now though. 
but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys really, really quick how I cut my cabbage thin, okay? I just do it like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get off here and I'm, I'm not gonna have you guys just look at it. Hey guys, what this is right here, <clears throat> excuse me. This is the bacon and onions. I wanna do my phone right over the top of it. See that? The bacon and onions that we're, used, we're uh, cooking to put our cabbage in. And what I don't want to do, you guys, I don't want to cook the bacon until it's crispy. You're not supposed to do that. Because the bacon is going to cook some more when um, you put the cabbage in it. So what we're going to do, I'm going to let you guys see that real quick. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this off for right now. And I'm going to continue to cut up my cabbage. Anyway, I have stirred up. I'm trying to... Sorry, y'all. I have stirred up the cabbage and what I'm doing is just trying to cook this down you guys I haven't put no season on it but you can still see you see the um, bacon in it now let me tell you guys a secret when I used to make cabbage somebody that was dating years ago loved cabbage but they didn't like my cabbage and they kept saying it's too soggy the season in it is really really good but it's just too soggy and I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Let me tell y'all something. You do not have to put water in cabbage. Y'all, that's what I was doing wrong. Cabbage makes its own water. I'm reaching over to get the rest of this cabbage, y'all. And I have not, still have not, sorry, y'all, still have not put any seasoning in it. I'm just showing you guys what it's looking like. But I'm going to have to put this down here. Okay, I'm back. You probably have noticed that I put seasoning on it. See that? I've got seasoning on it. I've got a piece of bouillon. I believe this is a beef one. And I'm just going to continue to stir it up so it can all get mixed up. And I don't know if you guys know it in my cabbage. Ain't nothing if you don't put um, black pepper in it. Y'all, this is crazy. I'm filming with one hand and stirring with the other. And I have a camera. I have a camera. I bought a camera when I first started YouTube. But it's just so much more convenient for me to do it on my iPhone. You can do everything on an iPhone. And um, I film with it. And I can do that because this is Carol's video sauce. This is my channel. I heard one of my, one of my subscribers say that people were coming for her because they said that her um, videos were not professional. Well, y'all really? Y'all gonna try to come for somebody because their videos are not professional? But I bet you she got y'all told because what she said was, I'm not buying a camera. My phone's working fine for right now. I, I, I just don't understand why people think that because they feel a certain way about something that everybody else should. Anyway, what we're going to do right now is just continue to let this cook. And like I said, I add no water. I just let it cook. I, you basically can call this fried cabbage because there's no water in it, very little oil. And I'm just going to watch it. When it's finished, um, I will come back. I have some other things to do. Get out of here, Kirby. Kitchen. While I'm cooking, in here sniffing. Um, I have some other things to do like mashed potatoes and stuff like that, but I'm not going to be doing that. I mean, you need to, I'm, I'm quite sure everybody know how to make mashed potatoes. But anyway, that's how it's looking. And um, we're just going to go ahead and let it continue to cook, and I'll be back. I also have to make cornbread. I have to make, um, and the mashed potatoes. Um, I'm probably going to wait and go sit myself down for a little bit because I am hot, you guys. Okay, this is the cabbage. It's done. The cabbage is already done. And the only thing that we need to make now is cornbread, mashed potatoes, and gravy. I don't know if you all want to. I am going to show you how to make gravy. Yep, I'm going to do that. Let me get my supplies and I will be back to show you how to make gravy. 
I can't bounce. So, two things here. Butter or margarine and some oil. I would say about a teaspoon and a half of the oil. I use the butter because the butter gives it a good flavor. Sometimes I use onion and garlic and all of that. Sorry guys, I hit the camera. All of that inside of, and, and, and the butter or the um, um, margarine, you um, just like two halves of this. And you gotta be careful because I have this stuff really, really high. And even though it's see the same, even though we're off. Okay, now, this is the way that I make gravy. Y'all may not make it like this, but this is the way I make it. So, if you want to try it like this, by all means, necessary, whew, I'm making a mess. Please do so. If you don't want to try it like this, you don't have to. But, this is the way that I make it. And the way that I make it, I use a bouillon. See the bouillon? That's got to be for seasoning. Because, in my house, my family, we like flavor. We don't like nothing bland. Okay, then you have your bone metal flour. Mm-hmm. Depending on how much um, gravy determines how much flour you use. I would say three tablespoons. That's what I would say. That's about how much I'm using. Which can yield a lot of gravy. Because the key to your gravy, you guys, is making sure, see that right there? Is making sure that your um, flour or um, the flour mixture that you have has enough oil in it. I put a little bit too much flour. So because I put a little bit too much flour, I've got to put some more oil. But the way it works out, you guys, is you just sit here and you, um, you sit here, excuse me, literally, and you can actually look at this as if it's being a roux, too. This can be a roux, too, um, for like gumbo. Um, for those of you that don't know how to make a roux. But what you're going to do, and this is the way, I'm, I'm from California, but my mother is from Alabama, and this is the way that my mother and my grandmother used to do my mother. My grandmother used to. My grandmother has passed away, but my mother still does her gravy like this. Now, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make sure I don't want to make it too oily. Can I turn that down a little? No, it's good. Okay. And so what we're going to do is this has to pretty much start getting hot and start coming together. And once, you, once, once it starts coming together, this um, mixture starts coming together, Came back and we, that's how that is looking right there that's gravy and that's mashed potatoes you see the mashed potatoes right there uh, what we have to do is we just have to keep on stirring this now mind you remember i already put um bouillon i put a bouillon into the season but let me tell you something um this right here has to have a good amount now my meatloaf is seasoned my mashed potatoes are seasoned um because i am a seasoned Literally, you guys, I lost a whole bunch of footage, so the gravy is not shown here. 
Um, hopefully this is self-explanatory. If not, go ahead and just send me um, something on uh, YouTube or even to my email and hopefully I can help. I do apologize. It turned out to be quite delicious though. However, I don't like meatloaf with gravy. I prefer meatloaf with red sauce. All right, you guys. Well, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to Carol's Daily Sauce. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and thank you for cooking with me.